Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, just uh, checking back in here with uh, some more opportunities for you to raise your grade. Uh, just posting this video that will coincide with your um, first aid notes and your test. I'm just going to talk about the test a little bit really and then may uh, skim through the notes here and hit some highlights. But this test is a little bit different. Uh, it's more of a uh, just an essay test. So if you will pull up the test and look at it um, the first question, it says choose two of the following questions and answer them with a complete paragraph. So there are four listed and you only have to choose two. Okay, and you can choose whichever two that you want and then answer those questions with the complete paragraph. Okay, so I'll just walk through these questions and talk about them just a little bit. Uh, number one, methods of first aid sometimes change as new information becomes available. What implications does this hold for people who have studied first aid and why? And so a CPR is a good example. I know every every so often CPR tends to change a little bit, um, and so why is that important? And why is that important for people that have studied first aid? Well, you know, one common answer is well, if it's constantly changing, then you look. I think you look at your CPR certifications, and they're only good for one year. Uh, and the reason is because if more updated information comes out, they want to make sure that they get it to the people. And so your certification doesn't last for five years, and then say on year four you're doing the what's not recommended anymore. Okay, so so really the main implication there is that first aid needs to be continually studied. It needs to be continually updated. Um, so if you are, especially in a field where maybe a service industry or you're dealing with lots of people, it's probably a good idea to keep those certifications up to date, or at least uh, you know look at that information on a regular basis, on an annual basis. At, at least. So the second question, why is it important to know any universal distress signal? So for example, when we're talking about universal distress signal like this right here, if you saw somebody doing this in a restaurant, you would know that they're choking. You know, why is that important to know? Well, it's obviously important to know so you know what's going on because sometimes in an emergency situation, somebody may not be able to speak. And so for example, if I'm choking, I'm not able to speak and you need to know that I'm choking. And so if everybody sees this and you know that I'm choking, then you can administer the right type of first aid. Uh, three, analyze the statement. Two people are better than one when it comes to administering CPR. So uh, is that statement true or not? Well, it's obviously true. Two people are better than one, and why is that? Um, well, a couple reasons. Uh, two people are better than one because you're probably going to be on 911, on a 911 phone call, okay? And you're going to be talking with uh, medical personnel. So somebody needs to be talking to them while uh, the other one's administering CPR. That's better uh, then just one person, because I know you can put your cell phone, say, on speakerphone and leave it on the ground, but you're still trying to process two things at once. So obviously two people will be better than one. Uh, the main reason that CPR is better with two people is because you uh, get tired. I mean, CPR is very tiring. So if you're doing compressions and then you switch out with another person, you've always got somebody that's fresh that is administering CPR, which is much better than someone who is tired uh, trying to continue. Uh, number four, in some areas, medical technicians decide whether to transport victims to a hospital for further treatment. And in other areas, anyone in an emergency is transported to a hospital. So what procedure do you feel is better? Uh, totally up to you. Do, you. do you think that it's more efficient that everybody go? Or should we only be sending people that truly need to go to the hospital to the hospital? Uh, so just answer two of those four questions with a paragraph. The next two questions, it says just pick uh, one of the questions. So there's two, and answer this in a complete paragraph. Uh, explain the procedures that you would go through as you come upon an emergency situation. And it talks about the three C's, call 911, etc. So you walk up on a scene, uh, what exactly are you going to do step by step? And you can use those notes to go through and check that. The second one, explain the importance of an automated defibrillator or an AED. Uh, if you don't know what an AED is, we've got those posted all around school. It's just a machine that you basically, it shocks somebody's heart when it's out of rhythm. So if somebody goes into cardiac arrest, you take the pads, you put them on, and it's a computer so it's very, very difficult. It's almost impossible to screw up. It's literally going to walk you step by step through the process. Check the pulse, CPR, stand back, shock, CPR. It tells you exactly what to do. So what's the importance of those? Why are they needed? They have become more and more popular as technology has advanced and more readily available. If, for example, Walmart would have multiple. Most large churches would have one. Golf courses are going to have one. Really any place where a lot of people are gathered together at one time is going to have an AED. I know at all our sports facilities at school, there's an AED in the school. Like I said, there's AEDs all around. So why is that important? Just answer that in a paragraph. And the last question in a one-page essay, create a scenario in the life of an everyday high school student where first aid might come in handy. So explain how it could be a very good use in that situation and be specific. So just 
you know, detail a situation at the high school where first aid might come in handy. Just a couple of examples. Obviously, you've got a PE class, maybe somebody rolls an ankle. Uh, what if you're out in the garden area, maybe you're on lunch, you get to eat out there, and somebody gets stung by a bee that's highly allergic. Uh, those are just a couple of examples, but somebody's choking in the cafeteria. I mean, you can come up with lots of scenarios. This is really a, a simple test where I just want you to think and process through some things and just, and just write them out. And uh, I'll look at the notes real quick and just see if there's anything that I want to cover. So the three C's when you walk up to an emergency situation, what are those? Well, those are check, call, and care. So you come up on an emergency situation. The first thing you do is you check the surrounding area, right? And you look for dangers. The last thing you want to do is put yourself in danger. And now instead of one emergency, we've got two emergencies. Okay, check the victim. Is he conscious? Is he breathing? Is he bleeding? Where from? How serious? All those things you need to be aware of. Second thing you do is call. So obviously you call 911, all right? And if the victim is in need of immediate care, get someone else to call 911. Now an interesting note to point out on that is, you'll see in first aid videos if you pull some up on YouTube, if somebody needs, if you need somebody else to call 911, it's very important that you call out an individual specifically to call 911. If you said, hey, somebody call 911, what's going to happen is everybody's going to stand around and stare at each other and point fingers. Who's he talking to? Who's supposed to call 911? And it doesn't get called. What you need to do is say, hey, you in the black shirt, call 911. That guy's like, that's me. I got a black shirt on. Call 911. I got to call 911. And it happens. The same thing on a much smaller scale happens in the classroom on a daily basis. If I looked at the class and I said, hey, somebody on their way out, pick up that trash and throw it away. Well, every single one of you is going to leave and the trash is still going to be on the floor. But if I said, hey, Mike, pick up the trash on your way out and throw it away. Thanks, man. It's going to get picked up. It's going to get thrown away. The same thing with 911. Make sure you call somebody out specifically. And then the person that does call 911, whether it's you or somebody else, stay on the line until help arrives. They're going to try to access as much information from you about what's going on so when the paramedics get there, they can start administering care. They don't have to ask those questions because the more time is wasted, obviously the more se severe the situation can become. So they want to have all the information as possible when they get to the scene. The third is care. So obviously just care for the victim. Okay, If possible, get the victim's permission before giving first aid. If the victim refuses, don't give it to them. You've got to respect their wishes. As crazy as that sounds, and we'll talk about the Good Samaritan Law here in another video, but if the victim can't speak, don't hesitate to provide care. You're covered. Again, we'll talk about that in the Good Samaritan video. So check, call, and care are, are the th three things that you need to do if you walk up on an emergency situation. Um, and then CPR, uh, basically the three steps of CPR are just compressions airway and breathing so you want to start giving chest compressions you tilt the neck back you blow air and open the open the airway and then you can breathe air into it um, you can watch some some videos on that if you choose to uh, and that's basically just the basic things we talked about uh, rest eyes compress elevate already in in a video last week so if you've got any questions about that test feel free to shoot me an email i am more than happy to help you walk you through that um, it's not meant to be very complicated and make sure that you check out uh, the other video that I'm going to post on the um, Good Samaritan assignment. So I hope everybody's doing well. Staying safe.